Ghost of Tsushima is a beautiful game. From the very start, you know this is going to be a highly cinematic experience. In the opening moments, the samurai arrive upon a hilltop, backlit by moonlight, and it's a stunning visual. I looked upon these warriors with admiration, but you'll quickly realise all isn't well. The camera reveals what the samurai see and the odds are clearly against them. The Mongol army have landed on Tsushima, but the samurai remain resolute and prepared to die to protect their lands. And between the two armies, the game quickly establishes who believes in honour. Needless to say, things don't go well for the samurai and after the battle is over, Jin is alone. He wakes to find himself hidden in some bushes, injured and watching the Mongol soldiers killing and purging the village in front of him. I won't delve further into the plot as I don't want to spoil the rich story that unfolds, but it's a fantastic historical exploration of the samurai and Japanese culture. But all this would be meaningless if the game itself didn't deliver. Fortunately, the combat is superb and steps up in difficulty as you progress through the game but it never seems overwhelming on normal difficulty. I spend a lot of time trying to get my timing down for those perfect parries and dodges. There's a lot more risk to attempting perfect parries, but it's so rewarding as you enter the slow motion view which accompanies that perfect timing. But if you lack quick reflexes, you can perform the standard parry which has much more forgiving timing. When approaching new groups of enemies, there's also a standoff option which is a little like a western style duel where you have to get your timing right. If you swipe too early, you'll lose. Get it right though and you'll feel empowered as the slow motion animation plays out. But it isn't all sword play. In addition to sword battles, there are a variety of other tools at your disposal. Smoke bombs, throwing knives and a bow are just a few. Although each of these leads onto another aspect of how you may choose to play the game and whether you follow an honourable path or the samurai path. Jin spends most of his time dealing with opponents alone, with his samurai code of honour guiding him. However, the easy route to victory is often to utilise tactics which break this code. An early example in the game is through assassination, where you can sneak up on your enemy and stab them in the back. After you've performed this action a few times, you'll experience a flashback to your uncle teaching you the samurai code, reminding you that you're straying from the honourable path. So, throughout the game, I had a real dilemma as I purposely tried to stick to the samurai way. In terms of the game structure though, this feels much like Assassin's Creed. There's a map filled with things to collect, foxes to follow, hot springs to bathe in, villages to free and forts to attack but everything serves a point in either progressing the story or improving your character. On that point, there is a leveling up system. It's relatively basic, but allows you to customise your character and choose how you want to play. Alongside this, there's also the means to upgrade your armour and weapons. Plus, you can dye your clothing and choose how your weapons look. But there are two aspects of Ghosts of Tsushima which I really enjoyed. The first, is extremely important and that's the story. You'll be joined through the experience by a wealth of characters. They all have their own issues, values and objectives. A major pull for me is that I love the history of the real samurai. To get into play as a samurai for myself in such an accessible game, which is also based on real historical events from 800 years ago, is just a perfect setting. The second aspect is the depiction of Tsushima itself. From the pampas grass fields to the beautiful trees, waterfalls, marshes, beaches and forests, the detail is incredible. If what we see on screen is even in part close to the real Tsushima, you can see why the samurai would die to protect it. But one particular success that really enhances this world is the lighting. If Japan really is the land of the rising sun, then the developers certainly took that to heart. There are often moments when the sun looks incredible as it both rises and sets. It adds so much atmosphere, especially if you happen to be in a battle during a sunset. Needless to say, I'm a big fan of this game. It's one of those games I warm to instantly. I might very well have been a few years late to the game, but I think this is a game I'll replay and will stick with me forever. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, or as always, make sure to comment below on your thoughts on the game. And I hope to see you again soon.